Hello everybody, welcome to day number 19 of March Mathness. Today I've got another addendum to a previous video I've made. Today I am revisiting my very first thematic breakdown video, the one between Karapika and Sasuke Uchiha. Much like with the tournament arc video, this is one that I do like overall, but do think that there were a few tweaks that needed to be made, uh, a few things that I missed that I overlooked. A bunch of people in the comments were just talking about how, oh, Karapika is such a great character compared to Sasuke, and, you know, how dare you compare Sasuke to Karapika when their, their characters are so completely, like, the quality of each character is so completely different. Sasuke is such a poorly written character. But that was not the intent of the video at all, which some people didn't understand. The purpose of that video was actually more so a defense of Sasuke's character, just to show how different he and Karapika were, how they were each character attempted to explore completely different ideas. However, I think that I could have done a much better job at defending Sasuke's character, because there was a lot of information that I just didn't include, like everything post-Itachi, really. Um, I talked about how Itachi's death affected Sasuke, and about that big paradigm shift he had, but there was more to his character beyond that, that I never really even got into, um, but now that I've gone back and revisited Naruto, I have a bit more, a more well-informed perspective on his character. I do stand by my statement that Sasuke's character is fairly simplistic, at least at the start, and that's part of why his character works so well. However, I think I oversimplified that a bit in that original video, which is kind of ironic. Sasuke doesn't just care about his quest for vengeance, he does care about his comrades as well, and that was one of the focal points of his entire character arc. One of the big things for Sasuke when he fought Naruto at the end of part one was that he had to, he wanted to cut ties with everyone close to him and bear his burden himself. And this is the main point of his character arc that gets challenged at the very end. It's a constant throughout most of Naruto. He takes the exact opposite stance of Karapika, who places his comrades over his goal. Sasuke is the reverse, where he places his goal above his comrades and everything that he does is in pursuit of that goal. But at the same time, he doesn't, throw his comrades under the bus. When he goes off to train with Orochimaru and later joins the Akatsuki after killing Orochimaru, he does all of this of his own volition. He tries to stay away from Konoha as long as he can avoid them. The only time he comes into conflict with his comrades at first is when they are actively pursuing him and trying to stop him from reaching his goal. And when he eventually does turn on his comrades after Itachi's death, when he declares war on Konoha, he only does this because these shinobi are defending a system that he, at that point at least, does not agree with, that he only sees as a corrupted system. After all, it may have just been the Leaf Elders, it may have just been Danzo who forced Itachi to slaughter the, the Uchiha clan, but... Sasuke doesn't just stop with them because there is no one in the Leaf Village who seems to be questioning the way that that system operates. And Sasuke doesn't understand why they continue to go along with this corrupt system. And so that's why he seeks to destroy everyone. There is a difference between the unresolved crises that I referred to in the, the original video. Karapika's vengeance towards the Phantom Troop just suddenly disappears. His target of vengeance is gone and he has nowhere to direct that. So it just kind of dissipates. Whereas Sasuke gets a completely new target for his vengeance because the the cause, the source of his suffering turns out to not be his brother, but rather the system that caused his brother to massacre the Uchiha clan. So then Sasuke is not just trying to destroy the cause of his suffering, but he's trying to destroy the cause of his brother's suffering. Karapika's situation with the Phantom Troop in York New doesn't really have the same connotations to it. A more accurate comparison, if I wanted to use Karapika as an example, let's say that the Kurta clan had planned to declare war on the, the Hunter Association, or planned to declare war on somebody. So the Hunter Association actually hired the Phantom Troop to exterminate the Kurta clan to prevent war. At that point then, like to actually show a clear difference between their two characters, either Karapika would have to be just like Sasuke, and his target of vengeance would then become the Hunter Association, or Karapika would then somehow have to move beyond that, and if he could do that, then he would be truly different from Sasuke. At least as far as that paradigm shift would be concerned, because as it is now, like, he does start off with a more nuanced personality, I feel. He's fully aware that he's descending into darkness, but he can't really stop himself, because that's, that's the goal he's looking for. Even now, in the Dark Continent arc, that hasn't really changed. I mean, the stuff that he's going through there will definitely affect 
where his character goes from here, but he still does have the same, like, he's still the same character, really. He still floats back and forth between the light and dark halves of his character. Whereas with the hypothetical situation that I posed just a few moments ago, Kropika would then be more likely to reject one of those two halves of his personality. Would he abandon his quest to avenge his clan just because, oh, it wasn't actually the Phantom Troop, it was the Hunter Association? I kind of get the feeling that Karapika would go after the Hunter Association if that was the case. It would certainly be interesting to see what that would entail if he would perhaps come into conflict with Gon, Killua, and Leorio, but then again, the Hunter Association isn't quite the same as the Leaf Village, so there's not necessarily a forced conflict there, so even then the parallel isn't quite the same. To kind of replicate Karapika's plight with Sasuke, the only way that you could really show Sasuke going through the same situation that Karapika experienced with the Phantom Troop in York New, you would have to have, I don't know, some random member of the Akatsuki. Maybe, maybe Pain kills Itachi or something before Sasuke can actually fight him. Because then at that point, the object of Sasuke's vengeance is gone, and there would be no additional context surrounding that. It would... Itachi would just disappear, and Sasuke would have nowhere to go with his vengeance. So if that were to happen, then yeah, I could see him doing something similar to what Karapika did, where he might just go back to the Leaf Village and reunite with his comrades. Sasuke's character arc is Kishimoto's exploration of the world that he created, this world of shinobi. Because through Sasuke, you have this character who suffers all this hardship and comes to question why it is that these ninja, these shinobi, do what they do? Why did his brother massacre an entire clan just to protect the village? What is a village? What is a shinobi? These are the questions that he seeks to answer. And so when the Great Ninja War rolls around and the main villains are defeated when he's got a clash with Naruto, it's because he wants to start a revolution. He wants to completely reject this corrupted shinobi system. He wants to reject the system that tortured his brother, that caused him to massacre his entire clan, to reject the system that created all this internal strife for Sasuke himself. And the method he plans to use to achieve this goal is very much so tied to the other aspect of his character, the fact that he rejects his comrades. Sasuke plans to become an entity much like Pain, where all the hatred will be directed towards him. He plans to bear the entire burden of the world upon himself, and that's not something that Karapika would do. In the Orkney arc, Karapika does try to keep his friends out of his conflict with the Phantom Troop, but ultimately when push comes to shove, he allows them to help him. Karapika doesn't fight with any of them to try to keep them out of his way to let him handle his business on his own. He accepts the help of his friends, and that's something that Sasuke would not do. When Sasuke has his final battle with Naruto at the end of the series, he finally learns through his defeat that... He needs to learn to let people into his life. He needs to learn to not try to bear all the world's problems on himself. He needs to learn to let other people help him with his problems. He finally learns to understand what it means to be a shinobi, what it means to be a village. A village is a group of people who try to preserve this idea of peace, who work together to try to prevent conflicts, but they work together. A character like Hitachi tried to bear all of these burdens himself, and he failed. The first Hokage tried to bear the burdens of the world on himself, and he failed. He created Madara. And Sasuke comes to reject Madara because Madara's ideal plan, the infinite Tsukuyomi, involves rejecting reality to live in a dream. And by doing that, it invalidates all the effort that everyone else had put in to try to make a better world. It invalidates Itachi's efforts. He sacrificed himself, his life, and he made his brother Sasuke's life a living hell to try to protect this idea of peace, to try to protect the Leaf Village. And the last thing that Sasuke wants is for his brother's efforts, for his own efforts to be completely rejected, for it to be worthless, all for nothing. When I say that Sasuke is the best written character in Naruto, it's not just a meme. Throughout the course of the entire series, these ideas are set up, and they're explored very well. The conclusions that Sasuke reaches are built upon the efforts, the life experiences of multiple characters, including Itachi. And Kishimoto manages to take these seemingly extreme leaps in judgment, these seemingly extreme paradigm shifts, but he grounds these extremes through logic, through the amount of information that Sasuke is taking in. And for one final addendum to that previous video, I did say that I wasn't a super huge fan of Sasuke's abilities. I'm still not really. Uh, the, just the way that the power escalation goes in Naruto isn't great. But I can at least appreciate Sasuke's powers on like a thematic or conceptual level, I guess. With how Sasuke's worldview evolves, he typically will get 
a, a new set of eyes, as it were. So when he gets his Mangekyo Sharingan, for example, that only happens right after his battle with Itachi, right after he has this massive paradigm shift. When Sasuke kills Danzo and gets more insight into why he did what he did, why he forced Itachi to slaughter the Uchiha clan, he gets the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. After Itachi is resurrected and the two Uchiha brothers fight Kabuto and Sasuke gets a little more insight into Itachi's mindset, Orochimaru gets resurrected, he meets up with the five Kage and learns the whole origin of all of this, you know, the history of Shinobi, and then goes on to fight Obito and Madara, thus understanding their mindsets for how to fix the Shinobi world and seeing the flaws in their judgment, he gets the Renegon. The mechanics of how these things work in fights are not super impressive to me, but seeing how Sasuke's abilities progress alongside his character is pretty cool, and I will give Kishimoto credit for that. I don't know if I really have a preference between the two characters. There's obviously going to be a massive difference here because Sasuke's character arc is over. He, I mean, Naruto is finished, whereas Hunter x Hunter is still ongoing. Kurapika still has an ongoing character arc, so I can't really make any final judgments on Karapika's character when his arc isn't over yet. The point I was trying to get across in the original video that I kind of failed to do, but hopefully you understand through this one, is that both are really great characters. Sasuke is well-written, Karapika is well-written, and even though Karapika at the moment doesn't have quite the same amount of progression as Sasuke, there's still, I don't know, I think it's just that initial personality that kind of gets me, that I, I just like. Maybe my opinion will change once Karapika's character arc is over. Maybe I'll end up liking Sasuke more in the end. But either way, they're not the same character. It's not like, oh, Sasuke's just a Karapika ripoff. And I think that about covers what I wanted to talk about today. So I will catch you on tomorrow's edition of March Mathness. Yeah.